How you doing, everybody? This is Kurt Henry at the Mortgage Center. I work together with my dad, Randy Henry, and uh, we are with a mortgage brokerage, and we we work with multiple banks and lenders, uh, basically to find our clients the best mortgage and the best deal, um, and uh, and that's kind of what we do. So this is a weekly mortgage update, just to let you know what's going on in the mortgage market. Uh, Five-year fixed rate is is come down a little bit this week. It's uh, the best rate is about three point three eight percent. Having said that, though, I mean it just depends on the situation. So so a rate of 3.49 or 3.59 percent is still a good rate. Uh, variable rates are about prime minus 0.75, which is 2.25 percent, um, or in and around there, anyways. So that's kind of where the rates are at. I also wanted just to talk about uh, or talk to first-time home buyers or people that have uh, not bought a house in a long time. Um, just just to remind you, if you have bought a house before, so a few things uh, as a first-time buyer. Uh, you don't have to pay land tra up to two thousand dollars of land transfer tax, which is nice. Normally, that's a large part of closing costs, uh, so that's a good thing. And then another advantage to being a first-time home buyer is that uh, you can use your RSP money if you have any money in your RSPs. You can use that money towards uh, the purchase of your new house. Um, now, normally, if you were to take money out of your RSP uh, for any other thing, then you're taxed when you take that money out. Um, and then you're also taxed because that money that you're taking out is put on your income at the end of the year. So technically, you're kind of taxed twice. Um, but as a first-time home buyer, you can take the money out of your RSP, and you can use that money for the purchase of your new house, um, and you're not taxed on it at all. So that's uh, the advantage to the RSP. Now the only thing is though that you do have to repay that RSP money back into your RSP um, you know, uh, over the next 15 years. Um, so that's kind of how that works. Now normally when we have a first time buyer uh, we'll take them through a few things. Um, just a, a couple of terms that I'll just speak briefly about and then also about closing costs uh, and a little bit about uh, some real estate uh, things that you need to know and lawyers. So in terms of a, a couple of quick terms that you need to know there's the term and then there's the amortization. So the amortization is the amount of time that it takes to pay the whole mortgage off to zero. So a standard amortization is like 25 years. Um, the maximum amortization is 35 years and the only reason why you would take it to 35 years is because that would put your monthly payment lower. Um, so that's the amortization and then the amortization is broken down into terms. So a standard term would be like a five-year term. So when you when you hear somebody talk about a five-year fixed rate, that's a five-year term and that just means that everything within the term that you're signing with the bank is the same for that term. So basically your payment, your interest rate, uh, and any condition that you sign with the bank stays the same for that term. Um, so that's the term and uh, in the amortization. The term, by the way, it doesn't have to be five years. It could be one year. It could be ten years. It could be, you know, whatever you want. So uh, it's just that the interest rate for each term will be different. Uh, so that's how that works. Now, in terms of closing costs, uh, you can think of closing costs as kind of like an umbrella. Um, and then you've got different things under that umbrella. So uh, typically with closing costs, a lot of people think that there's real estate fees. Um, but as a first-time buyer, you're not paying any real estate fees um, because the realtor gets paid by the seller. So whoever you're buying your house from is actually paying your realtor. Um, so that's a really good thing to go to know because uh, your realtor is a valuable asset that you can have throughout the whole process. First of all, they write these contracts all the time in terms of the contracts that you need to sign to uh, to buy your house. Um, so it's a good thing to have somebody there to explain to you what you need to be watching out for when you're buying and signing these contracts. Um, uh, certainly though a realtor has much more value than just that they're also going to make sure that you're actually buying the house for the proper value and um, uh, and they'll walk you through everything that you need to know plus you're not paying anything for them as a first-time buyer so that's a really good thing and you definitely there's no reason not to have uh, a realtor if you're a first-time buyer so uh, so that's that there's also uh, under that umbrella of closing costs there's uh, lawyers so I normally like to refer to a lawyer as kinda like the quarterback of the cash in the whole transaction um, so 
on closing, which is the day that you take possession of the house, the lawyer is going to get the money from the bank, which is the mortgage money. Um, and then also on the closing date, the lawyer is going to get a check from you. And that check from you is going to include your down payment and your closing costs. So it's normally just one check that the lawyer gets from you to cover the down payment and the closing costs. And then, uh, and so then the lawyer has this pool of cash, and it's the lawyer. The lawyer is the one that actually pays everybody. So the lawyer pays the seller and pays the realtors and pays whoever else needs to get paid. Um, so that's what the lawyer does. Plus, of course, they're also going to make sure that everything is legal and uh, that all the documentation is is done uh, that that needs to be done. Um, and then sometimes there's some other miscellaneous things in terms of closing costs. So for example, uh, a, an example of a miscellaneous might be if, uh, if you're buying my house today and say it's November, um, and let's just say that I've paid my property tax for the rest of the year. So that means that you would have to reimburse me for the property tax that I've already paid to the city. But then of course you wouldn't have to pay the property tax to the city for the rest of the year because they're already paid. Um, so that's uh, that's kind of a uh, a quick introduction to uh, to closing costs, anyways. And uh, normally, what you want to do is is or what the bank likes to see is that you have to have 1.5 percent of the purchase price set aside for all of those closing costs that I was just talking about. So that means if the purchase price is two hundred thousand dollars, then one and a half percent of that is th uh, three thousand dollars that you should have set aside just for closing costs. So um, uh, and then the down payment is separate. Uh, depending on the situation, though, uh, you don't necessarily have to have a down payment. So if you have any questions on that, uh, the first uh, point or person to contact would be the person that had sent you this video. Um, and then if you have any questions from there, uh, just give us a call. The number is 905-436-8010. And one other thing that normally we take you through as a first-time buyer is just how you get the mortgage amount. Um, uh, which it's a little bit more of a, uh, a more drawn out explanation, but uh, if you do have any questions on that, feel free to give us a call. All right, thank you and have a great day.